My son and I visited the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. It was filled with rock and roll memorabilia and enshrined the legends who developed this music art form. I really appreciated the backroom stories told of many of these legends. For instance, we learned that Elvis Presley's album of greatest hits was the number one album in the nation, not during his lifetime, but 25 years after he died, or at least I think he died. Uh, some people are not sure about that. But in spite of enormous success, Elvis, as most of us know, was a very unhappy man. He was unfulfilled human being. And his wife Priscilla gave an interview at some point and said this about her husband who died of obesity and drug dependency at age 42. Here is what she wrote. Elvis never came to terms with who he was meant to be or what his purpose in life was. He thought he was here for a reason. Maybe to preach, maybe to serve, maybe to save, maybe to care for people and that agonizing desire was always with him. And he knew he wasn't fulfilling it. So he would go on stage and he wouldn't have to think about it. That's pretty sad in a sense regarding his purpose in life. While he was here, he had no clue how to realize his inner desire to serve. And that's really what serving on a ministry team at our church is all about to help you realize a purpose in life. Now to be sure, serving helps others, it helps the church, but it also helps you. God wants you to be in this life for others, and that is why we are alive. And the Bible has that word for it, it's ministry. Every single believer is a minister. They're not all pastors, but every believer is a minister, and ministry is using how God created you to help somebody else. Now, Fox River, we have four Stephen Ministry caregivers as part of our caring presence. And the model of Stephen Ministry is Christ caring for people through people. Well, this morning, we're going to explore how Jesus cared for others. First of all, Jesus cared by being available. One day, Jesus was walking down to go to Jericho, and some blind men started yelling at him. The Bible says this, two men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And the crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. But they shouted all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do, he asked. That's in Matthew chapter 20. Note that Jesus stopped. If you want to be used by God, if you want to serve God, you must be willing to be interrupted. I've observed while reflecting on the scriptures that most of Jesus's ministry and most of Jesus's miracles were in the midst of interruptions. He was about something else and then he was interrupted and took the time to listen. The people he healed, the blind man, the lame man, the paralyzed man, they were all healed in the midst of an interruption in Jesus's life. In fact, his very first miracle came as a result of an interruption by his mother at a wedding. His second miracle in Galilee was in the midst of an interruption as well. Jesus stopped. A lot of people follow the steps of Jesus. They like to study the steps of Jesus, but I wanna encourage you to also study the stops of Jesus. And how many times he would stop what he was doing, and when he would do so, he allowed himself to be interrupted and to do God's bidding. He said never, it says in the scriptures, never tell your neighbor to wait until tomorrow if you can help them now. Proverbs is keen to remind us of that. Servant-hearted people, they don't procrastinate, they're spontaneous, they're sensitive, and they say, okay, let's do it. Caring like Jesus means being available. There's another thing about Jesus' care. Jesus was grateful. The Bible tells us a story in John chapter 11. 
of Jesus serving in an incredible way. His, his friend Lazarus had died, and he went there. Some people thought it was for a funeral, but Jesus had a different idea in mind. He went there to do ministry, to raise Lazarus from the dead. Now, he could have waked up and prayed a prayer and not said anything to anybody and just to himself and God, but he decided he wanted to pray out loud so that we could still read it today and see what he had to say to those people who could hear it. It's a very interesting story where Jesus prayed out loud. It says in John that Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here. I want them to know that I am grateful that you heard me. Jesus had that attitude of gratefulness in everything that he did. The Bible talks about our attitude of gratefulness. In Psalms 100, we find this remarkable verse. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Why do we serve God? Not with a sense of duty, but with a sense of delight. Not out of a sense of obligation, but a sense of the great opportunity that he's given to us. We serve him with gratefulness because he's given life to us through Jesus Christ. He saved us, and if he never did anything else for us, that is enough to be grateful for, for the rest of our lives, to be able to serve him. So serving like Jesus is being grateful, but also serving like Jesus is being faithful. Now, what does that mean? It means you don't give up. You keep on going. You don't quit in the middle of your assignment. Jesus said this. He said, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do in John's gospel. I want to be able to say when God calls me home that I've completed the work that God gave me to do. Jesus was faithful in fulfilling his service. He didn't give up. He didn't give in. He was persistent. And if you're going to be like Jesus, it means you're going to serve as long as you're alive. Now, you may retire from your job someday, but you never retire from ministry. You never retire from service because God wants you to serve the rest of your life. It's a lifelong investment. One day you will stand before God and God is going to say to you, what did you do? How did you invest your life? What did you do with the education and the abilities and the skills and the family support and the experiences that you had? What did you do with them? Well, here's a question for you. Is God going to be able to say, well done to you? You spent your life in serving me, well done? So I make no apology in saying to you that the most important thing we will ever do with our lives is serving God in some form of ministry. Because it is far more important than your career. It is far more important than your hobbies. It's even more important than anything else you could think of. Why? Because it is going to last forever. Jesus cared and served by being grateful and faithful. Now let's go back to Elvis for a moment. It's a curious fact that his only Grammy Award that he won for an album of over 250 that were sold was a religious album that he recorded called He Touched Me. And the song on that album says it well. It says this. After the lightning and thunder, after the last bell has rung, I want to bow down before Jesus and hear him say, Well done, my son. He is my reason for living. He is my king of kings. I long to be in his possession. He is my everything. That's something for the king to say, isn't it? Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you 
for your love and for your grace. We realize that we have been shaped to serve you by serving others. And so, Lord, forgive us for the times that we have put a, a do not disturb sign on our heart. Help us to see the interruptions in life as opportunities to serve. Help us to make time for what matters most. We want to serve you freely and gratefully and faithfully. So one day we can hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. In your name we pray. Amen.